Hey everyone, my name is Curtis Wilson. I'm a medical student at KaiCom, and I'm making this video to explain a few things about Anki I wish I had known when I got started making Anki cards. I believe this video will help you study and make cards more effectively. In the description, you can see timestamps for different parts of the video if you'd like to skip around. And with that, let's get started. What is Anki? Anki is a digital flashcard program that allows you to make note cards for use on digital devices and uses an algorithm to help you with long-term retention of information by scheduling cards based on how you say you answered them. It's important to be honest with yourself when giving Anki feedback on how you say you answered the card. How should Anki be used? Anki should be used daily. You should follow Anki's algorithm and trust it. Personally, I found a lot of success once I figured out how to make the cards effectively and when I trusted Anki's algorithm. You can't use Anki like you would a program like Quizlet by going through them multiple times in one sitting. Likewise, you also can't go through them like you would imagine going through physical note cards, flipping through them until you feel you know the cards. Instead, Anki schedules cards each day for you to go through, and when you answer them correctly, they get scheduled for another day, thus not being brought up again that same day. Anki works with long-term retention, and thus you must do all the cards due for that day, both the new and review cards. You can't just go through the cards continuously. Anki settings. Anki can be pretty daunting at first with an unfriendly interface for first-time users. I'll show you how I have my options set up, and then explain each one. That way, if you just want to pause the video, set up and get going, you can do that and move on to the rest of the video, skipping the explanations. For those that want to further customize their settings, you can stay around and I'll explain what each one means. What's nice about Anki is that you can have multiple settings across different decks. I typically name my settings by how many new cards per day are set up for that options group. For example, this options group has 50 new cards per day, so I name it 50 new. Here are the settings you'll need to change to make Anki work most efficiently, in my opinion. New cards. If you go to order, you want to show the cards in random order. And new cards per day, you can set that up to however much you feel comfortable doing. Depending on the class, I change mine between 75, 50, and 30. I also uncheck very related new cards until the next day. Now for reviews. I set my maximum reviews per day to the maximum amount. That way, none of the review cards get pushed off to the next day, maximizing Anki's algorithm. Then we can move over to lapses. Here, I only change leech action. Leech is a setting that is designed to detect bad cards. Essentially, if you don't get a card right after so long, it will delete the card, because Anki thinks you either designed the card in a poor manner, or the info isn't going to stick, so why waste time on it? Instead, this will tell Anki not to delete the card, but to tag it. And that's it. How to make Anki cards. In my opinion, this is the most important part of using Anki. This can make or break the program and is the inspiration for this video in the first place. Starting out, my card making was horrible and I came across issues I wish I had known about sooner. When you look up how to make Anki cards, there are a few resources out there explaining it well, and the typical explanation is to just do it. While that works, it may not be very efficient, and I'm a big fan of living and learning vicariously. To start off, there's one type of card I use for 99% of my cards. This would be the closed deletion card. In my opinion, this is the best card that can be used in Anki. This card type is also what makes using Anki effectively very difficult. To use closed deletion, you really have to know how to place a deletion to make the card effective. Many times, you could end up hiding the wrong information, or you could answer the card correctly without actually being correct. I'll show this with an anatomy example. Let's start with a fact. The sciatic nerve emerges from the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen, inferior to the piriformis. If we close out sciatic nerve, we could end up getting multiple right answers when trying to answer the card, as the inferior gluteal nerve also passes inferior to the piriformis. Therefore, when you get this card, how would you know which one is correct if you made the nerve the closed deletion? Instead, we could close out inferior as the anatomical relation is specific and only has one right answer. One other helpful tip is to add images to your cards. This can work for all subjects, but I noticed it was most helpful in making anatomy cards because I could ask a relations question and after I answered, see a picture if I got it incorrect or to verify my answer. This is personal preference, but I add images to almost all of my cards as it makes it more appealing to look at and I feel like I'm learning more as I look at it in a picture. This is what our card looks like afterwards.
You can also make cards with multiple closed deletions to appear on the same card or different cards. If the C number is the same, all of those cards will be closed out on the same card. Those closed deletions would look like this. If the closed deletion numbers are sequential, the cards will have different information closed out throughout different cards. Those cards would look like this. I also like to make these cards with these hints because it can make it faster for you when you go through them and reduces any ambiguity about what you were actually asking when you made the card. This is also helpful in anatomy with anatomical relations. To make these cards, just type two colons and the information you want to be displayed afterwards. This is the part that will be hidden. This is the information that will be displayed on the closed deletion card. And this is what that card looks like. Here's another example. Here we would make endodermal the closed deletion because if we made follicular cells the closed deletion, there are many things that endodermal cells differentiate into. So the card wouldn't be as specific or effective. Instead, it's more specific if we ask where the plates of follicular cells came from. Now on to Enki's strengths and weaknesses. For strengths, I have studying. Once I'm done doing Enki cards for the day, I feel like I have accomplished studying and I'm retaining information over a longer period of time. This has boosted my test taking confidence and reduced anxiety from wondering if I'm studying enough and when I should stop for the day. Once your cards have been made, and you've gone through your new and review cards for that day, you're done. And any extra studying is for fun or anything you need extra work on. The next strength of Anki is the long-term retention. You're doing these cards over a long period of time, therefore helping you remember it over a longer period of time for other exams such as boards. The next strength of Anki is actually making the cards. In making the cards, you have to think critically about the information about what's important and what can be asked. Therefore, making the cards is actually a learning experience. Another strength of Anki is card sharing. You can split the load with friends and use other decks that people have created, such as bros. On to the weaknesses of Anki. The first one is time commitment. Anki can take a lot of time when making the cards. That's why I do mine in groups. The next weakness of Anki are bad cards. If you don't make effective cards, you can learn information that can mislead you, or you may not be getting the big picture. Another weakness for Anki is conceptual information. Anki is not great for conceptual information, but you can tweak the cards to make it work. Finally, there are my recommendations. To start off, let's talk about add-ons. Add-ons are helpful tools in Anki that allow you to customize your cards better as well as make adjustments to your scheduling. You can add them by going to their Anki page, copying the code here, then going to Anki, clicking Tools, going down to Add-ons, on the browse and install, and pasting the code there, and clicking OK. The add-ons I suggest are image occlusion, true retention, and skip today's reviews. Image occlusion is the most important. There are plenty of guides on how to use it. It's very helpful for anatomy. True retention gives you more statistics to look at. Skip today's reviews allows you to take a break. This will allow you to skip the day's reviews and evenly spread them out over the next few days so that you don't get hit by the next reviews as well. How I use Anki. I use Anki every day. Personally, I don't use the skip today's reviews add-on, but I had it in here for people that might want to use it. What I do is create a new deck for that day's lecture, add it to a parent deck, for that class, and then I add each class to a parent deck for that block. set it up in this fashion, you first need to create a block deck. Afterwards, you need to create a class deck. You then drag the class deck into the block deck. However, you need to make sure that you're pushing it onto the actual block deck. If you put it above or below, it will add it to a separate deck. This deck is now a sub deck of this deck, therefore following all the rules set in place under its options group. Do a lecture, create a lecture example, we would add our cards, 
and drag it to our class. If you're going to set your decks up in this fashion, it's important that you understand options groups. These are what we set in the very beginning. For example, Block 5 is the parent deck for Immunology, Neuroscience, and Physiology. If we go to the Options group, I have it set to Unlimited. That way, the cards are not limited in these three classes by the Block 5 parent deck. Any decks underneath this parent deck will follow its rules. Therefore, I limit my decks by class. If you go to their Options groups, I have 50 new cards per day for Immunology, Neuroscience, and Physiology. That way, I only get 50 new cards total from each class. If we go to my lecture deck, I have this set to unlimited. That way it has to follow the parameters set in place by its class deck. Therefore, because physiology is a determining deck for how many new cards I will do that day, same for neuroscience and immunology, when I want to study, I will click on physiology and then hit study. Another important nuance of Anki to remember is that it will order the decks alphabetically. This can be important as new cards will be pulled first from the top decks while studying from their respective parent decks. It's important to understand this because as cards may come out random from their lecture decks, it will not mix with new cards between decks and instead pull cards from their verse deck. For example, say I have 50 new cards set up for this class. Every day I get 50 new cards. Each lecture has 50 cards in it, totaling 100 cards. For this day, because it is restricted by the 50 decks set by this parent deck, I will only get 50 cards from this lecture. Group work. I make my inky cards in a small group of people. We split up the classes and share the cards for each lecture in the class we made note cards for that day. This reduces the amount of time necessary for making the cards, but can pose problems if you aren't all on the same page on how note cards should be made. You also don't get the learning aspect of how the cards should be made. To combat this, I go through their cards in order with the lecture pulled up and make any adjustments to the cards I feel is necessary, and I try to think critically on how I would make the cards. It takes less time than making the cards, and I'm still learning. This also gives us more time to make our cards effective, as we don't have to worry about making cards for all of our classes, and instead can focus on being experts in one class, and being familiar with how the material could be formatted into a test, and make the cards accordingly. Anki account. You must have an Anki account in order to sync your decks between devices. I prefer to make my cards on my desktop, and then do them on my iPad as I go for a walk. Having an Anki account allows you to do that by syncing up any new cards you added for that day, as well as sync the scheduling between devices. Set up an Anki account, you need to go to ankiweb.net, click on sign up, and fill in your information. Once you've created your account, you can sign on to your desktop by clicking on this little icon, and putting in your information, and signing in. That's all I have for now. I'll put an example deck in the description for you to download if you'd like to look at one. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching.